Sunday, May 15th. Let's get after it. Let's play E5 here. I'm playing 2300 in the first game. I'm going to try for H4, H5. We'll, we'll be aggressive here. Yeah, strong opponent right off the bat. What's up, everyone, on Twitch as well as YouTube? I see you all in the chat. Hope you're having a fantastic weekend. Greetings, one and almost eight billion. I'm doing well. How are you doing? Yeah, been getting a little sun. Trying to get outside, enjoy this weather while it's around. You're not good. You're sick. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, a lot of people are sick at the moment. And it's not COVID? Okay, good. Hope you feel better soon. I like my position here, by the way. This already looks kind of sketchy for black. Let's take en passant because it's morally forced, right? You got to take en passant. <laughs> What's up, cheeseburgers? H5? Seems so natural. Got to go for it, right? I mean, tremendous, tremendous pressure coming down on G6. Bishop F5, I'm not even sure helps much because I take... Things are going to collapse on the h6 square next. So I'm thinking just this. Just plow forward. I mean, I could play bishop g6, queen d3, or knight h4, but let's just continue going forward here. So if you're just tuning in or you're watching the VOD, uh, first of all, welcome. And this is Lee Chess Plays. This is a weekly event. And I play viewers for two hours in 3 plus 0 blitz. It's a great time. We get into some uh, wacky situations. Last week, we had a, uh, an under-promotion to a knight with checkmate. I learned to uh, hold down control when you're queening, if you want to turn off auto-queen. If you have auto-queen on and you want to get a, an under-promoted piece, oh, and this is a nice move, you hold down control. I think this should win. I mean, black has to take, otherwise uh, queen g6 is checkmate. And... Yeah, this is this is mate, right? Speaking of mating with a knight. Oh no. Yeah, okay. I, I thought knight d5 was mate too, but this is uh this is guarded. So this is a nice mate on the other hand, though. With the knight coming in to guard the other knight. I was debating between which knight move to play. All right. So we take the first game. This looked pretty rough for black after black started defending. I think h6 is the wrong reaction. Um yeah, honestly, allowing e5 in this exact position seems like black's playing with fire too, you know? You can do that in the king's Indian, but this is this is a little different because I've already accelerated my development. My knight is on c3, and the pawn is on c2 behind it. So, yeah, I think definitely risky for uh, OJ to uh, to play that way. And f5, I think this is already collapsing. The, the attack almost plays itself, as they say. Thank you for the game. All right, we got a lot of challenges here. 68 challenges. JRG, you're up. How are you guys liking the board theme, by the way? The preview pick. Let me see what you wrote here. Um, let's play C4 in this position. The preview pick for that video on YouTube was amazing. Yeah, big shout out to uh, Lee Chess. They've been posting some really fun just little uh Clips, snippets from the, the Lee Chess Play streams recently on the Lee Chess YouTube channel. Maybe someone in the link, if Numeroid or uh, uh, No Joke Chess are in the chat, maybe they can link it. But yeah, if you guys missed any like interesting, fun moments from the streams, feel free to check out the channel. You should check out the channel anyways. But Okay, Knight C6. Um, I think I could take here. Well, let's do that, because maybe this transposes to like... Um, a slightly different line where queen takes d5, inducing queen takes d5 could be could be good for me. Ooh, queen a5, but I'm just going to block and defend the pawn. JRG tried to get fancy, but I don't know about that move. Have I ever had mate with under promotion before? Um, It's a great question because last stream was the first time I can remember under promoting to a knight with checkmate. I'm sure I've under promoted to a rook. For mate, bishop or knight, though, previously? I'm not sure. Really not sure. But then again, as I explained on stream last time, I'm not one of the type of players to, like, go for that. You know, I know that doesn't make me, like, as fun as uh, potentially some other players, but, like, to me, I, I'm just trying to win in chess. Like, I like to occasionally create some beautiful work of art, but I'm definitely more on the side of just win <laughs> and try to... Try to do so efficiently. 
But every once in a while, like, creativity will strike me. You still are funny. Oh, thank you. And thanks to everyone for uh, tuning in today. What's up, blah, to a username? I see you on YouTube. Thank you. Hello, Joshua G., Edward Reynolds, Zachary. Oh, yeah. Are you going to challenge? Okay, I believe you. Send me a challenge. Anyone can challenge. Three plus zero blitz. That's what we're uh, focused on here. It can be rated or casual. Can you adjust the layout so we see the taken pieces? You know, yeah, you're right. That information appears right here below the clock. However, I would have to uh, find a good good place for my webcam, and I'm so used to having the webcam on the on the bottom right. I got to keep it as is for now. My layout actually looks a little bit different than normal. Hold on. Let me try to stretch this a little bit. Ugh. Webcam's merging with the board. This is a bit more normal for me. Okay. Let's go 95. I'm going to try to threaten queen a4 check, and I want to guard the d7 square. Just curious, John, are you married? Do I have children? Nope. Nope to both. I am unmarried. I have no kids. Only uh, opponents that I adopt. <laughs> Which honestly doesn't happen too often. <laughs> but I do like the uh, streak counter that Lee Chess has. So if you have history with someone, you played them before, it'll appear down here. So it'll show you like your results against someone in particular. I found it's a really great way to just keep track of people that you don't run into often. Uh, or you you might play, and then a year goes by, and then you play again. It's kind of cool. You're like, oh, you click on the games. I remember that game. Or, oh, I played this person in this arena way back when, two years ago. You could shrink your webcam and put it on H1. Great idea. Yeah, the webcam could fit in right there. That is a fantastic idea. Okay, I want to play c6, but then rook takes d6. I don't really want to take this rook because it's so poorly played. So let's get the knight involved. I feel a bit bad for JRG because they're so cramped. They're down in material. Oof, now take. Black can't take here. Take here, and then we're going to go ahead and play queen takes d7. Pre-move this one. All right. Thank you for the game, JRG. Yeah, so queen a5 was a little too fancy there. You should just go ahead and take that pawn right away. Queen takes d5. I was going to play knight f3. And uh, this is like an alipin where there's been an early exchange on d4, which is why I went for this line. I personally think it's a little safer for black to play knight f6 so that you can always have the option of taking back with the knight on d5. So little tip there. Hello, Aryan. Aryan, did you challenge today? I don't see you in here. I'm sure you're in there somewhere, man. Thanks again for the game, JRG. Okay, Gadu. Gadu. Let's play uh, B3. What do you guys think of the layout? Are you guys digging the board and piece layout? I went to a layout that I've used a while back. I, I kind of like this one. I'm partial to this, I got to say, but don't let that influence your answer. The embroidered board, the denim board. You like it, Dr. Harry Thompson? Same with Bakus. Very nice. Uh, okay, queen d6. Interesting response. I don't think I've ever faced that move here. I mean, I could take, because if queen takes, I take this pawn, but I feel like I shouldn't take. I feel like I should try to derive some benefit from this, but I don't know what. I mean, maybe here, but then maybe queen comes over. You know what? Let's take. I changed my mind. I don't know what my bishop's doing on b5 if I can't capture in this moment, but I'll, we'll see if that's been played before. That's an interesting move. What is this piece set? This is the, uh, I think it's the Marita piece set. Let me check. Oh, Maestro, Maestro. Yeah, this one here. So sixth, sixth down on the left-hand uh, side. 
when you open the piece set preferences. Yeah, black takes with the pawn. That looks correct. Um, yeah, I guess I'll play knight e2. I, I should have had my move prepared, but um, I was debating between knight f3 and knight e2. You dig the rhomboid bishops. Yeah, that, that's a nice little um, shape for that piece. I agree. Same with the pawns. I find the pawns very aesthetically pleasing. Even the knights. Just a nicely designed set. The squares are a bit faded. Yes, it's, it's a distressed chessboard, you know? The kind of thing people pay a lot of money for. <laughs> but you can get it for free on leechess.org. <laughs> a virtual version of it, at least. Oh, and this allows a fork. Did Black forget about my bishop? Let's pre-move this just in case. Will you play one game with the Anarchy chess set? Yeah, I will. I will do that. We might as well, right? That one was recently added here, way down below. You guys can't see it because my webcam's blocking it. But All right, so I'll probably just take back. I could also do a little domino sequence here, but I like just taking back. No problem. You should have matched the chessboard with denim shirts and pants. I, I do that sometimes, yeah. Uh, sometimes I try to coordinate. Am I not a horsey fan? Oh, I've used the horsey set before. Some of the before some of the early streams, we used to do that for the final game. Let's take. Take again. Ooh, in between move, but is that wise? I have serious doubts. Press X to doubt. Let's take here. And then I'll just prevent my opponent from uh, castling. All right. This is not a mate threat, so let's just develop. Oh, Steve. Okay, yeah. Hope we get a game. I see you. Steve W sending in the challenge. My username is Fins, F-I-N-S, on Lee Chess, if you guys want to send me a 3-0 challenge. Thanks especially to the people who uh, tune in every week or close to it, and those of you who challenge, even if um, you don't happen to get a game. You know, I usually average about 20 games per stream. I try to keep things going pretty, pretty fast. But, um, of course, with receiving three, four, or five times the amount of challenges as I can possibly get in games in, it's, it's impossible to play everyone in this time span. All right, the king is leading from the front. You got to admire that. Let's go here, maybe flirting with the queen f4 idea. Thank you, GHH. Oh, you're studying uh, my course on chessable. Thank you, Adim Mumbai. Yeah, I hope you like it. I worked really hard on that course. That course was about three, three months of continuous work. 19 hours of video content, very, very clean, uh, well-researched content. Yeah, I'm really pleased with that. It's been out for a couple of years now. All right, let's give the check now. However, if I give the check, I do have to watch G2, you know? So let's just play G3. Rook takes F6 was the threat, trying to deflect, so I might as well just throw this move in before I get too uh, fancy. And this will be over soon. That is 100 endgames you must know, Jay Huby. I believe they're talking about. Uh, thank you, Gado, for the game. Yeah, your queen d6 move, I kind of like it, you know? I, I didn't exactly know. Those of you who play the Nimzo, uh, or sorry, the Nimzo Larson, I should say, with b3. I'd be curious if any of you have faced this move before. And there's there's several playable moves, like even this this gambit knight e7 is playable. Usually you see bishop d6, I'd say. But queen d6 is kind of interesting because yeah, I mean the queen could swing over here. That strikes me as an interesting route for the queen to attack the uh the g pawn, maybe link up with the bishop to attack c2. Queen h5. Ah, I didn't even consider queen h5. Yeah, in hindsight, I wish I would have played that. That's clever because black can't go f6. That would be illegal. So I renew the threat on e5 using the pin. 
let's just take a quick peek here. See what, uh, ooh, a lot of games in the Lee Chess database here. What about the Masters? Yeah, one Master game with Queen D6, which Black did in fact win. A game from 2010 between Margia versus Stromboli. And the lower rated Stromboli won the game with that move. Only Master game in the database. On Lee Chess, it's been played a fair amount. It scores reasonably well, it looks like. Yeah, this is the overall percentage, 52% to 44%, the respective winning percentages for either side. Now, that doesn't include the draws, by the way, if you're ever looking at this, um, this metric. The gray band in the middle is the percent of draws, and it's sometimes hard to see if it's, if it's a, a small percentage. All right. Well, thank you for the game. I learned something new in this game. Yeah, you, your big mistake was allowing that fork on e5. I think you're still very much okay here if you, if you take or push one of the two moves. All right, moving right along. <laughs> Dad bod shuffle, greetings. You must be a chess bra viewer. I think I've, <laughs> I've heard Eric refer to the, je the Dad bod shuffle, <laughs> the bad dodge. I can't even pronounce it. Dad bod shuffle. Dad bod truffle? Dad bod shuffle on his stream. So hopefully you're there. Maybe not. All right. We're going to have to move on. Frenetic Pawn, you're up. Good luck. E4. I think that was the name of Eric's speedrun account. Oh, interesting. Must have been on chess.com then. Okay, let's play... Hmm. Monka, hmm. Let's play... Ah. I usually play Italian or Relopez, but I'm kind of feeling something different. Let's play maybe a Scotch Gambit. D4. And then bishop c4. Oh, fish emoji. It would not be a stream without your presence. So thank you for tuning in from Florida. Take. Okay, so since black played h6, this like anti-fried liver idea, we're going to play this now. Typical trap here, bishop c5. Many of you have probably faced that move in the past. That would be met by bishop takes f7, followed by queen h5. I'll show that quickly after the game. Uh, this looks a little more interesting. I wonder if I can punish this somehow. I'm not exactly seeing it. Now nah, it's just castle. We're going to invite black to take and then take here. I don't think that would be a good idea for black, but you never know. Yeah, so black just castles. I think I should probably capture here. Seems a little bit lame, but let's go ahead and do that. And I'm probably going to play e5, depending upon how black captures here. Yeah, taking with this pawn looks correct. I think that's a good idea for uh, frenetic pawn. I'm going to go queen f3. There are quite a few situations within the e4, e5 openings where when white captures on c6, you want to take with the d pawn rather than the b pawn, mainly to open this or have your queen have access to certain squares like d4, as in the Rui Lopez. Bishop e6, interesting. I like that move too, because if I take, there's a slight weakness there, but... um. I think I'm going to try to keep my bishop. Normally, you don't want a bishop wedged in between two pawns like that, so this is sort of incumbent on me playing e5 to justify this, but we shall see. Bad dodge bundle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got a uh, server error for Lee Chess. Hmm. Yeah, site's been working fine for me. Ooh, we got other reports that it's down. That's no bueno. How about on YouTube? Any YouTube viewers having issues accessing Lee Chess? A couple reports on Twitch. What's up, Handles? Okay, I'm kind of threatening this. I mean, maybe even... Maybe I don't even want to take it. There is Knight H5 to be reckoned with. Guess I could go queen g5 against that. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, Lopare, one of our, our mods on YouTube, also says it's down. Interesting. 
I'm going to try to connect from my phone here after uh, this game, just out of curiosity. So some sporadic outages, huh? Um, okay. I don't think I'm much better here. I mean, I slightly prefer my position. It looks a little more comfortable with the bishops, despite the pawn structure. Okay, I was trying to set up this idea. So maybe frenetic pawn just blundered. Because if takes, I take on f6. I like that username, by the way. Okay, seems like most people are reporting that the site is okay, but definitely for some people it's down. All right, now check. Open this up. Okay, now I think I'm winning because I'm going to take on h6 next move. Do I have a checkmate pattern? Probably not. I, I don't think I'm threatening a mate imminently. There is this idea with bishop h6, bishop g6, but it's not quite working. Here, probably just check. And then on bishop g6, just take. Ooh, but black allows the capture. Hello, Remus. I'm doing well. How are you? All right, now I have mate. Mate in three. Black took away that flight square on e7. Okay, thanks for the game frenetic pawn. So although this approach with h6 is not supposed to be good, I think you actually kind of made it work. Knight f6. Yeah, this looks correct. So you avoided typical traps like if bishop c5 here, guys, a move you will very often see in this position. Uh, white has bishop takes f7, sacking the bishop, but then immediately regaining the material and exposing the black king and winning a pawn, most importantly. So black didn't fall for that, though. Knight f6 and then bishop b4. I think you made the most of this situation. Looks like I'm a little bit better here, but it didn't feel like much in the game. So thank you for the game. But yeah, maybe uh, maybe avoid that h6 line in the future frenetic pawn. I think even all the way up through here, you're probably still okay. It looks a little uncomfortable. Again, white has, white has the bishop here. You got to watch this threat. But uh, if you handle this carefully, maybe... Maybe you can get out of it. Thank you for the game. All right, we're cruising here. AK Chess 600, good luck to you. Oh, yeah, let me check. I'm going to attempt to access leeches from my phone. I'm just curious myself. Yeah, looks like it's fine to me. At least uh, on my end. Okay, let's play a Sicilian. Ah, uh, what line in the Sicilian should I play? Let's play um, let's play an accelerated dragon. I'm gonna go knight c6. Ooh, and c3, delayed alapin. Um, okay, I'll go knight f6. I'll attack the pawn. This can transpose to a main line of the alapin, but white plays bishop c4. So let's go ahead and attack that bishop. How many challenges? Uh, last I checked, there were around seventy. This is an interesting line. C4. Queen C7 to attack the pawn. And on Queen E2, do you guys know what black plays? If white goes here? Or what one of the theoretical moves is? It's not going to happen in this game. Take this pawn. So this is why Queen E2 was, was a better idea. Oh, and now this bishop's undefended, so I can take here with check, and I've got the discovery on that bishop. I believe the main move in that line I was mentioning, by the way, was g5. I will show that after the game. Your white is losing a piece. Do you have any good examples of adult improvers from students you have coached? Yes, yeah, definitely. I've seen a lot of students make progress from, let's say, the um, the enthusiastic beginner level to 16, 1800, even upwards of 2000 in terms of online ratings. Over the board, it's always going to be tougher. But uh, yeah, I have seen examples of that for sure. Let's go bishop d7. 
Hey, John, what is your favorite line that is unsound? Okay, I definitely got to say the Jinji Indian. I'm a big fan of that variation. It's super fun. Maybe I can even play it on stream today. Also called the Beef Eater. <laughs> Named after a brand of vodka. Or gin, rather. Um, so yeah, that's uh, it's not a line that will be, uh, will be healthy to play against title players like in long games. Like, if I played it regularly against IMs, GMs, whatnot, I don't think I'd score very well. But it's really fun and produces some unique positions. Uh, Slim on YouTube asks, Hey, John, was just wondering why you were not playing in I am not a GM. You would crush. Well, thank you for your uh, vote of confidence. I did not get invited to the recent edition of I am not a GM. So that's why I'm not playing. D5, Queen C7. Uh, I don't know. I'm just going to castle, I think. I don't want to allow queen c7 in when I'm uncastled, so we'll just play this first. I can still retain the threat of d5. <laughs> the beef eater? No, beef eater, like a youthful porpoise put in the chat. Do you know why you weren't invited? Uh, I do not. No, I do not know why I wasn't invited. Uh, I did get invited to the previous edition of I Am Not a GM, so the second one that they ran, and it didn't work for my schedule at the time, so I, I declined the invitation. I think that must have been a little over a year ago, probably. Is that right? Like early 2021 that they had it? And that was subsequently won by um, uh, I Am Molina, I think his first name's Rob. Is it Robert Molina? Uh, Brazilian I am, I believe. And I noticed he was not in the field too. So I wonder if maybe they're trying to, to get more people in the mix. I don't know. But yeah, I did decline the last one. So maybe they figured I wouldn't be interested. I might be interested in playing if, if it was organized like a match with the other I am not a GM winners. That could be fun. You know, unify the belt, let's say. <laughs> I might be interested in that. But it's a big time commitment, too. So, you know, it's multiple matches. Those matches are super long. It's pretty stressful. It's fun, don't get me wrong. But it would have to be worth it, too. All right, so I'm not trapping one of the rooks, but let's go ahead and continue attacking white. Yeah, thanks for the game, AK Chess. Just never really recovered from uh, Bishop F4 in particular. I mean, this position's already a little tough because you've lost that center pawn, but Bishop F4, just a killer move that goes against you because you lose a piece. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure there's a, a theoretical line that goes in this position. Queen E2, defending the pawn, and then this wacky, and we'll click to the Masters database, this wacky G5 move. You can see that's been played a lot here. It's the overwhelmingly played move. And for good reason, it, uh, <laughs> along with looking pretty cool, and it's like a fairly modern move, it threatens g4. So black is trying to deflect white from guarding this pawn on e5. Yeah, and then bishop g7. I think black takes on e5. White takes here. Produces an interesting position where black has one extra center pawn compared to white. Pretty, pretty normal stuff for a Sicilian. But um, really double-edged position, I would say. So thanks for the game, AKHS. That's what you should do in that line. You know, I think uh, this variation, you might have been mixing a couple ideas. I kind of get the sense that you were playing bishop c4 on general principles. Um, when in doubt, you can go ahead and play d4. You know, that's, that's definitely what you're building up to. So you can play that earlier if you want. Thanks for the game. Always baked okay. Let's do this. Um, let's play f4 this game. I'll play the birds opening. Oh, we got a raid from Eric. Thank you very much. I don't uh, have alerts up, so I'm just going by what the chat says. Thank you very much, Eric. Shout out to I am Rosen. He very frequently streams on Lee Chess. And I uh, hope you had a great stream. Let's play E3. Maybe Bishop B5 coming in. 
yeah, let's play that. You often combine this with b3, bishop b2 as well. So Nimzo, Bird, Larson. When was the last time you got adopted? Good question. Um, I honestly couldn't tell you. I'd be curious if someone could actually tell me. Because I don't often play super long sessions, which is a good like anti-adoption technique. That sounds terrible, like anti-adoption technique. We got to clarify, for those who don't know, that adoption is like a term that's been uh, sort of adopted by the chess community to indicate beating someone 10-0, so winning against someone 10 games in a row. <laughs> Please uh, take that as innocently as the uh, explanation provides. But yeah, because I don't play long sessions, it's very hard for me to get in 10 games against someone, period. So I couldn't tell you, honestly. I'd be really curious. I'm sure it's happened before, but probably it's been years. But for sure, there are players who would. I mean, I'm pretty sure, like, just to name a guy who streams a lot, other than Hikaru even, who definitely would. But, uh, like, Daniel Narditsky, I'm pretty sure, could adopt me if he wanted. Especially if we're playing Bullet. Maybe in Blitz, I could get a, a draw or a win or two out of 10 games. But Bullet, it's going to be tough. What line do I rec recommend against the ready Depends on what you play against d4 in part, I would say. Think about what you play against d4 and whether there's a convenient transposition if you want to go into a transposed d4 opening. So, for example, I play the Slav. So, against the English, I often play uh, c6 on move one. And against knight f3, I'll play d5. Um, so, there's, there's a lot of possibilities, though. So, many different things you can consider. All right, let's play A3. Oh, thank you, Blatu, username. I appreciate your comment. Thank you, Akash. Uh, Kiran says, Jinji Indian named after Roman. Yes, that's correct. The Jinji Indian is named after uh, Grandmaster Roman Jinji Hashvili, which is an amazing name. Do you guys know what movie Jinji makes an appearance in? Ooh, I think I might have blundered here slightly. There's a move that would have been interesting for Black. Queen f5, like double attack on these pawns. Not sure how strong it would have been to like win this pawn, but could have been interesting. Let's go here. This is a movie I would recommend to all chess players out there. Ooh, and although the knight is defended a sufficient amount of times here, it's... Not the defender black wants, right? Because uh, they lost an exchange in the process. That's right, Axiom Fox. Searching for Bobby Fischer. That is correct. That's what I was thinking of. There's a great scene when uh, Josh Waitskin and his dad go to the Marshall Chess Club in New York. And Bruce Pandolfini um, is pointing out like the great players in the room. And... Roman Jinji Ashvili is one of the players. And they actually show a shot of these players. They appeared in the movie uh, as themselves. So, like, I think Joel Benjamin is, is also listed. I'm winning a piece here. But, yeah, if you guys have not seen that movie, I would highly recommend it. It's just a great movie. And even, like, family members who, uh, or friends who are not interested in chess would probably like that movie as well, I would say. GM Lawrence Fishburne is in that. Is he a GM? <laughs> I mean, he's pretty legendary, so I could see why you think he's a GM. Well, we'll give him the GM title. It's honorary, right? GM Lawrence Fishburne. I mean, if you're in the Matrix, I think uh, you probably deserve the Grandmaster title anyways. Uh, thank you for the game. Yes, appreciate it. You're doing all right up and through knight d7. Yeah, knight b8, knight d7. Maybe the position's a little uncomfortable for me around here. Like, somehow my coordination doesn't seem great. Um, hmm. 
Engine says G5 here. I was also wondering about this Queen F5 move at various times because that could potentially win a pawn. I don't know, though, how thrilled you are to win the C2 pawn because that pawn is right in front of your king. But yeah, suffice it to say, you were doing fine. But maybe around here you start to slip. Like, I, I don't really like knight b8 going backwards. I don't think that was the, the greatest idea. And then knight d7 is a blunder. Thank you for the game. Okay. Who do we have next? Oh, Totoro. Good, good luck to you. 23-37. NM Totoro. Let's play d4. Oh, pre-move d6. Okay. Um, let's think. I'm going to go Peart style. We're going to play e4. Should I play my g3 variation of the Peart's? Let's do it. And then Munka asks, yes, I don't, I don't face too many title players on these streams. Um, we get some high-rated players sometimes as opponents. Like, you guys know Goldcat? I've had a, a, a few games against Goldcat in the past. He's like 2,500 Blitz. Always battles. I often have to swindle Goldcat. I think here I want to go H3. This is a challenging variation. And now Castle. And on Knight C6, I will probably play Bishop E3. Probably. One in almost 8 billion says, first loss of the stream, let's do a bet with Chant. Well, you want me to lose, huh? Well, now you shouldn't have told me that. I'm going to try extra hard. Okay, so if I play E5 here, what happens? E5 take, Bishop takes B7. That line just really catches my eye. Probably take here, though. I think I lose a little too much material, you know? So let's just play Bishop E3. And on Knight C6, which I'm almost certain will be played, I think I'm going to go F4. This is one virtue of this line with Knight GE2, so you don't block the F-pawn. So you can... Ooh, really? I don't really buy this. I think that's a pretty dangerous strategic decision. I mean, I could take here for one thing, but probably better to drop this back. Yeah, I mean, may, maybe this can work out. Maybe, maybe. Seems awfully risky, but we'll find out. If Black has to play energetically here. Because long-term, this pawn is pretty bad. I mean, it's backward. So we'll see what Totoro comes up with. Bruce Pandolfini also made a cameo in that movie. Yes, he did. Yeah, Josh Waitskin's uh, actual coach was in that movie. Yeah, I think he's in some scenes at the, uh, at the park in particular. B5, okay, yeah, this seems correct. When I said energetically, that's kind of what I meant. However, does it run into E5? E5, take, take, bishop takes F1, hits my queen. So unfortunately for me, that probably doesn't work. However, I'm seeing some interesting stuff. Okay, let's start with this move. And I would assume B4 is going to be the answer. This could get interesting. I mean, what if I play E5 now? Is that too much? E5, take G2, I take F6. Let's say black takes C3. Yeah, I don't know. That seems a little sketchy to me if I were to play that way. However, I'm really tempted to play it. What about this move? Oh, it's sharp. I mean, knight d5 is like the safe move to play here, but that seems kind of lame. Here, maybe queen b8. Oh, no, queen b8 doesn't really work. Ah, uh, all right, I'm going to try this. Let's send it. Knight b5. My time's getting a little bit low. I got to focus. We can't take this loss. One in almost 8 billion wants me to lose, so I think. <laughs> So for that reason alone, I need to concentrate. I was trying to make E5 work, but I think this is just a smarter decision. Really gets to the whole potential point of Black's uh, slightly shaky setup here. So Black takes. Okay, so now I have the bishop here. Okay, I, at this point, I feel very good. I don't feel so great about the clock situation, but I think on the board, I'm clearly better. Mm, 
Yep, I see your point. Let's go here. Now, knight b6, I'm going to go here to guard this pawn. Looks a little awkward, but I think it's fine. I think, I think. Might play c3 soon. I think I'll play that. Ooh, doesn't take, though. Interesting. Let's go here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm going to go c4. Maybe taking was better. I don't know. Okay. It's too bad we're both getting low on the clock because this is still a very tense game. But I think the clock is going to decide things. What's Totoro's bullet rating? Doing a little recon. Um, all right. Let's go rook d3. When you check your opponent's bullet rating with uh, only very little time left. <laughs> oh, but I got him here. Okay, now I'm winning. That's a pretty devastating move, too, unfortunately, for black. There's not a whole lot you can do to recover from that. Okay, thank you for the game, Totoro. Tense one. I was skeptical of your idea with C5, but perhaps you can make it work. I think you played it the right way thereafter. Ah, the engine says it's fine. The engine says it checks out. So when you play a move like that and you, and you take on a weakness like this pawn on d6, you do have to follow it up energetically most of the time. Because otherwise, if I get a chance to play queen d3, rook d1, target this pawn, black's really going to be suffering. Absolutely. But yeah, the engine does say that black has more than sufficient play here. b5, c4 even. c4 idea of, aha, uh -huh, this. You, see, you guys see why this works? So... If there's a series of trades, d5 eventually will win the material back. Okay, I'll have to look into that. I think even as played, this was all right. Maybe, maybe my advantage isn't massive here. I felt pretty good about this position, but there are some issues with b2 in particular. Like I was kind of jammed in here. But then time pressure, mutual time pressure. Thank you for the game, Totoro. Tough one. I will look for you again. Okay, Krapperov 75, good luck. Uh, let's play e4 in this game. ALX asks, hey, John, why is pushing all those pawns in front of your king good and not weakening? I never know. That is a great question. So I would say the reason that's okay there is um, black setup is fairly passive. Uh, at least um, they're keeping their pieces on their back three ranks. So it's not like black's immediately attacking me or anything. Um, also, I have a bishop on g2, and the pawns control so much territory on the uh, fifth rank. It's going to be hard for black to get at my king. But definitely, it is a little bit weakening long term. Okay, this is a theoretical line. I think black usually plays knight f6, and then white can go knight e5, threatening a mate on f7. Now, this line's pretty popular from what I've seen at the moment. Hello, Ayman. says, hi, John. I am following you from Egypt. Did you visit before? I'm smiling because there's kind of a meme on my channel about uh, someone from Egypt. <laughs> the OG viewers of my channel will know. But uh, thank you for tuning in. I have not visited Egypt, but I would love to someday. I would absolutely love to. What's the Egyptian chess scene like, Ayman? Are there... Um, Active tournaments you can go to. I know there's some pretty strong Egyptian players. Yeah. Yes, that's that's the meme. You guys know your meme. I see you in the in the Twitch chat. Yeah, Egypt has by far the strongest players on the African continent. Um one guy I always like watching his games is Ahmed Adli because he's really fun. Um, yeah, it's uh, 
definitely an up and coming chess country. I'd say pretty established chess country now. I like my position here. I feel like this pawn is pretty weak. Uh, I'll throw in c3. Black might try to thrash around a little bit here, trying to escape this bind situation, but I feel pretty good about this. I think f4 might be the way to go. Like maybe introduce f5 later, or even g4, g5. Hello, Z Nation. What's up? Ah, uh, this is kind of a threat, but I, I feel inclined to ignore it. I'm going to go G4. So, okay, speaking about pushing the pawns in front of your king, this is definitely a bit risky. But I feel we're at a critical moment in the game. I like the plan of G5 because black has a pawn here. So if I can induce some sort of trades, things may open up in my favor. I feel like this position is it's going to blow up soon, one way or the other. I have a couple ideas of how black should uh, deal with this move. I think black actually should have got aggressive there. We'll look at that after the game. Now I'm going to go back, I think. I was a little more concerned about queen d5 and also c5 on the last move. What is the meme for Egypt? Well, basically, I played a... Uh, a rapid or classical game on my channel several years ago. And you can find the video on my channel, actually. And I usually look for players, you know, 2,200 plus, like pretty strong players when I play. By the way, I wonder if there was a tactic having to do this. but And I played one player who was anonymous, untitled, but pretty good rating. And the first thing they put in the chat after accepting my seek and when the game started was, hi, I am girl from Egypt. I am girl from Egypt. And then that player, I said hi back, and the game continued. And that player proceeded to absolutely crush me. <laughs> Just annihilated me. And uh, lo and behold, it turned out to be a cheater. <laughs> it was very clear. So that's where the meme came from. Okay, here I'm winning a piece. Bishop c5 was possible on the previous move. I did see that. I was going to play knight takes d7. Oh, but then just uh, queen takes d7. So actually, I think I blundered there. But it worked out greatly in my favor. So yeah, the meme has turned into, like, if someone says that to you in the chat, beware. It's a very specific thing, and they might be using an engine. <laughs> Okay, trying to checkmate here. We're just going to throw our pawns forward. Should I pre-move this? It's kind of... Oh! I definitely shouldn't have pre-moved that. <laughs> I, I thought for sure I was going to get it. <laughs> now I got to flag my opponent. <laughs> Gimme. Good thing there's no increment in this game. <laughs> I thought I, I thought Crap Rob was gonna take. <laughs> Thank you. That was my uh, go out on a limb moment there. Not much of a risk given Black's time, but <laughs> yeah, I guess there was how many seconds? Ah, they they were under ten seconds. That would have been tough. But <laughs> I think in my head I didn't believe the move would register if Black refrain from capturing here, which is, of course, patently absurd. So in my head, I was like, oh, that's, that's a safe pre-move, queen g7. <laughs> it, it's only going to work. It's only going to register if uh, black actually moves their f-pawn, and I can play it. That's funny. Okay, so, yeah, key moment there. Rook takes d4, actually a terrible move on my part. I made a miscalculation here. Uh, Kaparov, if you happen to watch this. Um, I thought bishop c5, I saw this move, and I thought, all right, I'm going to take here, and then you take my rook. I made the mistake of assuming a capture, and then I was like, oh, I take back, and I've got two pieces for the, uh, for the rook. But of course, 
Black is not obligated to take the rook right away. Black can play queen takes d7. So in light of that, um, this position looks fine for black. Yeah, knight c6 is what I was considering too. It's kind of funny because, I mean, on site, this position looks pretty overwhelming for me. But in actual fact, black is fine. Despite black's pieces being confined to the, the back two ranks and some alignment stuff going on, I've thrown the pawns up around this. Looks like black's fine. So I got to figure out some way to play that better. But yeah, the move I was most worried about here was either c5 or maybe queen d5. Looks like c5 especially because that opens your light square bishop, Kreparov. You can try for queen d5 maybe to threaten queen h1. And again, if I take, I'm getting caught in the crossfire here. So a really sharp game. Interesting one. Thanks for the game. Okay, Paul Morphy, 113. Good luck. All right, let's play, let's play knight f3 in this game. If I were playing Paul Morphy, what would I do? I'd hit him with the flexible knight f3. And, okay, we'll play c4. Someone was asking about the ready, so maybe I can go into some theory there. Yeah, d4. This is considered one of the best ways to uh, reply in this position. You can play g3 here, e3, even b4. Let's play b4. It's an interesting move. You clip the pre-move thing? Nice. Nice, nice. Pre-moves like that are like, you know, the cool guy walking away from the crash or the explosion, I mean, in the movies. When it executes the way that you drew it up, it looks so cool. You feel uh, just absolutely vindicated, but when it backfires, it often backfires spectacularly. You don't make it out of the explosion. Okay, now I can take, right? Because I'm hitting the bishop, I'm defending c2. There is queen takes d4, but... I should win a pawn in the transaction, so I think this is this is pretty good. Oh yeah, black's going for it. Kind of a funny sequence, but it actually just amounts to a trade where where I've won a pawn. <laughs> Did I miss the Scandi? I have not played the Scandi today. No, you haven't missed a Scandi game. I can try to play it. I've got a couple openings that uh, I want to play here. We were talking about the Jinji Indian, so I might try to get that in. Only problem with the Jinji is that requires some cooperation on White's part. White has to play into the sequence. Was Bishop takes B1 good? Uh, where would Black play it, though? Where would it make sense to actually play that? Okay, 97, interesting move. I'm going to go here, I think. We're going to attack this. This anticipates the knight f5 idea, and then maybe I can go d4 coming up, or d3 even, if I want to try to trap this bishop. That might be an interesting move. Yeah, I think the answer is pretty clearly I should not have pre-moved that. Hello, Tomonome. Yeah, I could have tried d3 on the previous... Um, move as well, or previous couple of moves, really, d3. Would have been interesting. Maybe that was good, because even if black castles, I guess I can play bishop e3, or even, yeah, probably bishop e3. I don't know, black might have something to get out of that, but looked interesting. All right, let's go here. Got a pretty impressive pawn chain going on. But, uh, black is, is surviving here. Black's surviving. Oh, especially because I just made a mistake. Bishop a3. Bishop a3 would have been good there. Now I think I should be consolidating this pawn. Now we're looking pretty solid. h5. Um, let's play f3. I'm going to be, be a little cautious here. Black's trying to attack down the h file. That's fine. I'm going to stick the king on f2. I'm not under immediate threat. However, I got to figure out a way to coordinate in this position. 
It's not super simple because this dark square bishop is fairly strong. Maybe here now. I don't. I don't know about bishop f7. That didn't seem to do much. Okay, I'll try to play the Scandinavian BCCI. Do I have any plans to play Simon Williams again? I'm sure we'll play at some point in the future, but uh, no match plans or anything. He's always an interesting opponent, though. Okay, Bishop G8. The Bishop was jealous of the Kingside Knight, so it decided, hey, I gotta, I gotta take its place. You know, I guess there's some envy going on in the black ranks. So, um, yeah, just um, you can be anything you want. You can be a Kingside Knight if you want. Maybe bishop c4 coming. I'm going to try to attack the pawn on e6. I got a pretty impressive pawn chain here, I got to say. This is, uh, this is nice. It's sort of an extended inverted bathtub. Let's take here. All right, now I can win another pawn. I can attack this, hit this pawn on f5. I'm taking the entire black pawn structure. Let's take that one too. Why not? Ooh, nasty move because now I threaten knight e7 as well, or knight d6. That's kind of disgusting. Let's go knight d6. All right, we're both getting low on the clock. However, this position looks pretty overwhelming. So I think I should win it. Morphe's going to blitz me out, though. Never give up. All right, I'm going to take there, just for simplicity's sake. I, I got a little bit low on the clock here, so that's fairly close. Thanks for the game, Paul Morphe. Yeah, so you probably had some chances even after you lost the pawn. Bishop a3 there, guys, in this exact position, I think would have been nasty for me. Because where do I put the rook? Bishop a3, rook d1. Is it really going to say that if black goes bishop b4, I just play king d2? Yeah, king d2. That looks so unnatural, though. Seems like a dangerous move. Walking into the pin and uh, in two different ways. The d4 pawn is pinned, but the engine says, now nah, you're fine. If e5, a3. Oof. I don't know if I would have found this sequence. Almost certainly not. Take rook a1. And again, somehow this is good. Bishop b4, rook a4, hit the bishop. And if take, I'm coming up here and defending. Wow. Wow. This position, even though it's equal material, as far as I can tell, yeah, we both have lost one pawn and equivalent number of pieces. This is plus four for white. <laughs> These engines, man. Aggressive evaluation sometimes. But then there's always a reason behind it. I mean, when you dig into it, it's probably because this pawn's almost certainly going to fall. And I do have a ton more space than black. And the d4 pawn's secure. So interesting. Bishop a3, though, looks like a better move. Uh, also, e5. That's a tougher one, but e5 there, too. Thank you for the game, Paul Morphy. Very interesting battle. Martinio, 2294. Okay, another high-rated player. Um, Let's play d6 in this one. Uh, okay, knight f6. We might take this into a king's Indian. I'm not sure. Okay. This will be a little bit offbeat. A Tory, a Tory attack. Active king on move 18. Yeah, because the queens were traded, so you can you can uh, activate your king in those instances. Oh, thank you, Chris. You're liking the board? Glad to hear it. Um, Let's take this way. I haven't drank any of my coffee this stream. Time to do so. I'm missing some tactics. This hasn't been a total blunderfest by me. I played some good moves, but definitely missing some stuff. 
A4. Never sure if I should play A6 or A5 in these positions. I'll play A6. Try to control B5. Ooh, raid from Jonathan Schrantz. Thank you, Jonathan. Appreciate it. Vampire Chicken. That's uh, Jonathan's username. So thank you very much for the raid. Greatly appreciate it. This is Lee Chess Plays. We're just hanging out, playing some Blitz. You can challenge me if you want. My username is Fins, F-I-N-S. You can challenge me to 3 plus 0. We've had some battles already today, some interesting stuff. I feel I'm a little overextended in this position. I need to be careful. Usually I play this type of position from the, uh, the other side. So it feels weird to play it from the black side. Let's go here. This knight on f5 is definitely annoying. I need to do something about that. Beaver Gambit next game in honor of Jonathan. What is the Beaver Gambit? Dare I ask? <laughs> if we're following the uh, axiom that says you should not play openings named after animals, I would have to auto-decline that, but <laughs> you've got me intrigued. You have my attention. <laughs> Bishop f is nice. I think it shores things up here. Maybe I go 95 in the future. What is your take on the recent form of Rapport and Ferruja? You know, I have not been following um, the tournament going on right now in the lead up to the candidates. So I'd be curious what you guys think mainly. It seems like Ferruja from the, the few updates I've read uh, has been a little shaky. I think that surprised some people. Would you guys say that's accurate? I'm going to go 95. This might not be strictly sound, but I want to try to break free here. Okay, the Beaver Gambit. Oh, I've actually had that line in a tournament game before, Anton. I was expecting something a lot more obscure. Okay. So it's a line in the uh, in the Alapin. Okay, this I feel is okay for me now. This knight is still good, but maybe eventually I play bishop f5, kick it out. I might even do that now. Yeah, this I feel is starting to look all right for me. Not like I'm completely um, equalized even. I might be slightly worse still. But it looks okay. I'll go here. And if white takes, I take, and I'm on the knight. In these positions, if you can start using your pawns... Ooh, did this knight just get trapped in the middle of the board, c5? I was going to say, if you can start using your pawns to uh, push the enemy pieces back, this can work out really well. So I think, unfortunately for white, they took away their one flight square just now. You don't often see knights getting trapped in the middle of the board. So, a little unusual. Now, if rook takes, do I have bishop c5? Maybe, maybe not. Yeah, there's still a few loose ends here. So, uh, let's just be careful. Like, my a6 pawn is hanging, no doubt. But that was, for sure, a uh, a welcome series of events that just occurred. Okay, now I'm going to try to attack these pawns. White has established the always strong bathtub structure. I need to do some plumbing work. Some anti-plumbing work. We don't want that bathroom to be functional. And time is a big factor now, too. Let's go here. Bring this up. Just step out of the way. I wouldn't mind actually sacking on C4, maybe. Ooh, okay. These pawns are, are coming unglued, though. All right. White destroyed the, um, 
the integrity of the tub. Water's leaking in everywhere. Yep. Yeah, thanks for the game, Mardinho. Mardinho. I'm pronouncing your name like you're uh, an elite soccer player. Maybe you are, but Mardinho. <laughs> uh, Mardinho, I think you were outplaying me until that whole sequence where the knight had nowhere to go on D4. I mean, maybe up through here, you're still a little bit better. At least it felt that way. Knight D2 is the move. Backward knight move. Attacking the pawn. You probably do need something fairly subtle here to maintain the edge because it feels like I've eliminated a lot of the main problems in my position. Yeah. But even after this, you, you get multiple pawns for it, so it's not terrible. It's still a fight. But now it, it looks easier for me to play because your pawns... If these pawns were advanced further, like if white had this structure, I don't know, on these ranks, well, that would be a lot more imposing. But when the pawns are blockaded and they haven't crossed into enemy territory yet, even having many connected pawns like that is not at all the end of the world if you can throw a lot of obstacles in their way. But yeah, sharp stuff here. I mean, the eval is swinging back and forth at this point. Thanks for the game. All right. Angel. Let's play d4 against Angel. Okay. Um, maybe a Jobava London. I always seem to play two or three Jobava Londons each stream. So let's keep that tradition alive. I know a lot of you guys play this opening. It's really a lot of fun. I have several students who play this too. Leads to really interesting, rich positions. This is one of the principal lines in this opening. Let's play G5. Uh, now E3. We're going to go bishop to D3. You can take with the pawn in these instances. Um, I wonder if that's actually an appropriate move in this position. Taking with the queen. Nah, let's take with the queen. It's more active. Yeah, I think black should have played g6 there, because if white gets in g6, I think white's usually pretty happy. That black king becomes exposed. Oh, hello, Magos. Says, cheers from Italy. Thank you very much. Yes, thanks to all our viewers around the world. We always have an incredibly geographically diverse audience. Can I just do this? <laughs> Can I just walk in with my queen? BCCI asks, how did you get so fast the visualization of each opponent's pieces and their escapes? I can't even do that in puzzles. It is amazing to see good players find that so fast. Well, for sure it comes proportionally with your increase in ability. And I would say, honestly, just taking chess seriously from a very young age. You know, I've been playing the game for a really long time at this point. Um, that's probably the biggest factor. You know, chess is like a native language to me. <clears throat> and I think a lot of strong players, especially those who got good as a kid, which is almost all strong players, um, not to discourage you adult improvers out there, but that's just the reality of it. Uh, they, they will say the same thing, I'm pretty sure. It's not something I consciously practiced. It was a, um, just a long evolution. And absorbing the game on lots of levels over the years. Two sins says, I never played Jobaba. It looks much more aggressive than the regular London. Yeah, I've often said the Jobava London, which is this setup I'm playing here, guys, with uh, knight c3 on move two and then bishop f4. I've often said that it's it's an e4 opening masquerading, or uh, sorry, it's a, yeah, e4 opening masquerading as a d4 opening. It's like a e4 opening and a d4 opening's body. Because it leads to generally pretty sharp dynamic positions, which is not so common for d4. Not as much as e4. It kind of forces white to do so because knight c3 blocking the c-pawn is inherently uh, anti-harmonious, let's call it. So to make up for that fact, you, you got to get creative. But you, you have accelerated development to work with a lot of times, which is nice. Thinking how to play this. I could go for e5, but that doesn't seem quite right. Let's take. 
takes with the knight. Hmm. All right, I think I'll just take, and then I can go after this pawn if I want. Yeah, that seems by far the easiest. I think black should have taken with the pawn on d5, therefore. John, who do you want to win? The Celtics or the Bucks? The game is about to start. Ooh, yeah, that, that's an afternoon game. Wow. Okay, I didn't know that. Um, That'll be a battle, man. I mean, I don't have a rooting interest for either team there. I'm going to watch the uh, Phoenix-Dallas game tonight, game seven. So that ought to be pretty interesting. But, uh, yeah, I'll say... Uh, I'll say the Bucks because people were doubting them this season, but they're the defending champs. Let's see what they can rise to in Game 7 here. Sorry to my Boston viewers out there. <laughs> this is a nice situation here. This pawn on G6 often lasts a really long time in these games too, so... It, sur it survives pretty late into the game. Should I just push this? I'm just going to push. Thread in D7. I don't really see what black does against this. I know this pawn's hanging, but what is black realistically going to do to stop D7 here? No Starbucks today? I've got my coffee, but uh, it is not Starbucks, no. I mean, did you even ask a question, Asla Papa? <laughs> I don't see a question by you. All right, D7, Rook E8. Oh, and then this is coming in too. Yeah, this is GG. I mean, Black can still play this at the very end, but... Oh, then I would have Rook takes F8, Bishop D6, and then Rook E8. Okay, thank you for the game, Angeloni. So... In this variation, it, I think it is a, it's a bit safer for black to play h6 here. You don't quite expose your king side so much. I, like, I, will, I won't get g5 with as much momentum, or it'll be harder to prepare. I'm kind of interested in this moment. Like, c takes d3 might actually be good or even better than queen takes. Yeah, I mean, to me, it seems like g6 should be played here to stop this whole g6 idea. The engine's not as worried. It says you can allow it. And then just play f6, but that pawn's annoying, right? It's a constant thorn in your side in, in middle games and even end games. So I don't know. I think if it were me, I would have played this. It does allow bishop e5. That crossed my mind, but this seems like the lesser of the evils. And then try to complete your development. I do have to stop your knight from coming into c4, so very likely I would have played this move. But yeah, if you want to avoid this, um, you can either avoid playing bishop f5 which does invite this f3, g4 expansion. Again, not a very d4-like idea. Uh, or within this line, as I said, I think the, uh, the plan of playing, let's say if e6 is played, the plan of playing h6 is just safer. And then trying to go for c5 as well, trying to expand on the queen side. Thanks for the game. What do I do against the Sicilian? Well, I would say for most people, avoiding the open Sicilian is smart. Let's play e4. So at the top level, they play a lot of open Sicilian, which is, since we got a Sicilian here, I'll show you, which is knight f3 and d4. But for a lot of you guys, I actually like the c3 approach because very often black plays like this and white gets to build up the big center with the two pawns. SRVRC is not a paid actor, by the way. I did not pay SRVRC to play this way. But <laughs> this is a good advertisement for this setup. You can often get those pawns side by side, and white establishes a nice space advantage. This is now an exchange, or a French defense where the pawns have been exchanged on d4 quickly, which should benefit white because I get access to the c3 square. <laughs> Quiet. My, my paid actors for uh, chess instruction. <laughs> now we know SR, SRV is stream sniping too. 
SR, SRV tipped his hand. I will bear that in mind. Okay, um, I could take this knight. Could definitely do that. Let's play it. It's, it's the most straightforward way to handle this. What about here? I mean... Ah, bishop e6, queen takes b7, there's knight a5, so I'm not going to get greedy. That would backfire here. But yeah, truthfully, there's lots of options against the Sicilian, right? I mean, you've got the Grand Prix attack, the closed Sicilian. Those are pretty popular at amateur level. But for my students in probably, I would imagine, your rating range, I usually recommend the C3 Sicilian, the Alapin. It's very easy to play. And it often gives a, a pretty good position to work with. Oh, yeah. My, no problem, BCCI. Absolutely. Yeah, chess is great. No matter what age you take it up at, there's always something to appreciate in this game. I give you adult improvers out there a lot of credit because especially if you have busy lives, which most adults do, this is not an easy game to develop like a high degree of proficiency in. It's demanding. Um, you often feel like you're playing catch up against like kids and, you know, players who seem to take to it more naturally. But uh, I'm impressed by a lot of you guys. I've said this before, but these days I'm way more impressed if an adult becomes a strong player and makes a ton of strides in their games than I am if a kid does. Whoa, what is this move? Because with kids, it's like expected. It's like, okay, still a great achievement, but uh, they've got the plastic brain. Their brain is just suited to chess improvement, just like learning languages. For adults, a lot harder. Even beyond the neuroplasticity or lack thereof compared to kids, just adults have way more... Uh, Things going on and demands on their time and resources. Pa confirmed paid actor because of Rook C7? Yes. <laughs> what age do you consider an adult? 18? Uh, I mean, I'd say I I'd go even further than that in terms of chess improvement. Like, um, let's say 25 plus. Yeah, I think if you pick up the game at 18, that's still fairly young. Like, if your goal is to become a grandmaster, I mean, you're pushing it in terms of feasibility, but that's still, I, I know, I've seen teenagers, you know, people in their early 20s who've taken it up and become really, really good without seemingly expending a ton of effort. But I think once you get to, like, your mid to late 20s, like, that's when it's going to become um, a lot more difficult to make strides. If you pick it up cold, that is. Win a pawn. I've just been building out my position here, by the way. Just grabbing space. Okay, rook c7. Should I go ahead and play e6? That seems pretty consistent, so let's do it. We're going to hit the rook. Oh. We get the rook. Take here. This is carnage. Oh, nice BD Gambiteer. Very good. What do I think about C4 against the Sicilian? Do you mean like the Maroxy setups? They can be challenging in certain lines. Absolutely. Thing is, if you play E4, C4, you don't want to wind up with that like permanent weakness on the D4 square. That would be a big no-no. Oh, Gambit Gambler, we're getting a raid as well. Wow, we've gotten a lot of raids this stream. That's awesome. Thank you very much. And thank you, SRV, for the game. So you were digging in pretty nicely, but B6. I think uh, I think if you defend the B7 pawn here, maybe even take the knight, but perhaps even just a move like Queen B6. You're a little bit worse, but it's definitely a playable position. Things started to uh, collapse. Ah, oh, the engine doesn't even say you're worse. 
says equal. Maybe even a slight edge for black, which seems hard to believe here, but I've seen crazier things with the engine. Ah, pretty much dead level. It is opposite color bishops, after all. This bishop sometimes just gets wedged in in these positions, but it is a, a pretty nice defender. So thanks for the game, but yeah, b6. I was a little worried about if my knight was going to get trapped over here, so maybe there's some way you can try to exploit it, but I wasn't seeing it. But then rook c7, I wonder, why did you play rook c7, SRV? Are you in the chat? I'm really curious about that move. That was just, because you played it almost instantly. Were you trying to make way for your queen to come over here and you just missed the knight was attacking c7? Thank you for the game. Okay. LDS awesome. Let's do this. Um, let's play e4 this game. I will play probably a Re Lopez in this one. We'll bust out the uh, high quality line. We're going to avoid the Berlin end game though. No Berlin end game. Do you guys know about the trap? So in this line, d3, if black goes knight e7, and then white takes the pawn on e5? So knight e7 right here. I know that looks like a ridiculous move, but there's a little trap. Okay, here I can win a pawn. Black got a little careless with their move order right there. Can I play e5 now? Key question. Uh, e5 takes. I can't take with the knight because of the pin. I could go rook e1. Queen e7. Let's say bishop f4. Ah, just d4, though. d4, right? Let's play it. Seems like it should work. You guys are talking about the Bodler on the Twitch chat? Yeah, bishop c4 on move 2. At the amateur level, that is the line I see by far uh, most often against the Sicilian. It's like not even close <laughs> if you're going to single out a, uh, one line. It's kind of absurd, actually, how often it gets played. It can lead to boring positions, but it, it's not that bad for white, I will say. Like, black can't just autopilot and expect to get an even game. You got you to know what you're... You got to have some idea of how to play that as black. Okay, I'm pretty sure this will win a piece. Black can go knight d7. It's virtually black's only playable move here, but um, I think now I take and then play like queen e4, for example, or queen g3 or queen f4, one of these moves. Let me just think which one I prefer here. Let's take first of all. Yeah, I'm just debating, because I, I want to play d4 after this, assuming black defends the knight. So I'm debating where to put the queen. I think queen f4 is probably the cleanest move here. Queen f4, f6, d4. I don't see much of a defense to that. Queen b4 maybe? Nah, just a matter of time. Let's play it. I could go d4, but there is takes, and then I'd still have to try to attack the knight somehow. I could also have tried to line up f4, so like queen g3 and f4, but um, there is queen d4, maybe some minor complications. Probably all these lines are pretty equivalent, though. Okay, so black's just going to castle. I would assume the idea there is if takes, black wants to play rook e8, but not only could I win two rooks and a knight for the queen, but uh, I also have this, this queen f5 move. So I'm going to take this way. Could also play rook takes. Would be fine. Oh, thank you, Don Bello. Don Bello or Don Bello. Thank you very much for your kind comments. All right, we're just putting the finishing touches on this game. The Re Lopez can be pretty sensitive to move order, so my opponent 
like very quickly played like the a6 move and that cost them because when you're playing a6 in the Rui, you got to make sure you're not losing a pawn. I'm just going to play some quick moves here. I don't want to lose on time. I'm expecting h4. Let's just put a stop to any shenanigans. I would expect, yeah, black's going to throw themselves at me on the king side. Let's draw for a queen trade. Could also pick off some pawns, but these pawns are going to drop on their own accord, so there's no rush. Okay, let's go here. You guys notice I established the bathtub? I'm always thinking about it. All right, probably here. Then I can threaten to take on C7. We just got to avoid losing on the clock here. That's pretty much it. I think rook d7 is about the only playable move, but it's going to lose material here soon because now I'm getting in a check here, here or something. Win the rook. Oh, there's even a mate idea in this position, isn't there? I think this is force mate unless black plays queen takes c5. This is cool. This is a nice way to end this game. Don't even have to win the rook. Just go for checkmate with the night guarding here. Okay, thank you for the game. LDS awesome. Uh, so if you play this way, yeah. The way that black usually develops is to try to get the bishop outside the chain. <clears throat> bishop c5. The trap, by the way, so this is a funny one. In this position after d3, which is an attempt to avoid this Berlin endgame, which is castles, knight takes e4, d4, this line that is often lamented um, at, the, at the higher levels. Um, and there's various permutations of this too. Like you can also play this one. You guys know this line, right? <laughs> this is like the preeminent force draw variation at the top level. If you ever see this line in a top level game, you know the players were just both very interested in making a draw from the jump. And they just go back and forth. There's some players who do this all the time. Hikaru does this all the time. Uh, Wesley So. <laughs> it's a popular repetition for uh, many of the top guys. But anyways, in, in an attempt to avoid some of those simplified positions, you can go d3. And knight e7 is a funny move. Because if knight takes e5 here, do you guys know what black plays? Black to move and win a piece. As unlikely as that looks. Oh, thank you, DC Wang. Another kind comment in the chat. Best wishes for your uh, chess improvement. Yeah, black plays c6, hitting the bishop. And then wherever white retreats, let's say bishop c4, you've got this nice queen a5 check idea to pick up the knight. So <laughs> don't fall for that if you're on the white side of this. But knight e7 actually makes some sense because let's say white castles, you can transfer the knight here and defend the pawn, but... You know, lots of other options for black, including bishop c5. But yeah, LDS awesome. Got to be careful about a6. You played that move very casually. But h6, a6, this early, when you're not paying heed to the e5 pawn, this is trouble now. Yeah, and I think I was just winning a piece after that. I was going to play... In this position, if black played f6, I was going to go d4 and win the knight. This would be mildly tricky here, but I think only temporarily. I could play... I, could, I was probably going to go c3 here. This queen takes e1, mate is a threat. And then on queen takes b2, knight d2, something like this. But maybe then castles is possible. Because if takes, there's this. What is the cleanest way to play this? I don't know, queen b4, maybe queen e4? Nah, queen e4 still castles. Actually, this is a little trickier than I thought. In the interest of time, I'm going to throw the engine on. 
Wow, interesting. Only queen e3 is a good move here. Yeah, that would have taken some thought. Knight c3 castles, though. And knight c3 using the pin on the fourth rank. So definitely, I think from a practical standpoint, this is maybe the line black should have gone down. Yeah, only queen e3 is a, is a good move here. Huh. That escapes the fourth rank pin. It defends the rook. Still keeps that threat. If queen takes b2, threatening the rook, now I can develop, and I will win that knight at the end of the day. Yeah, quirky. Okay, who do we have next? We are in the final 30 minutes of the stream. Sali Bovic. Good to see you, Sali Bovic. Longtime viewer. Yeah, great stuff. Okay, uh, we got to play a Scandi, right? The people have been asking for it. We must play it. I'll play the Queen A5 version. John, do you ever stream on your own? Yes, I do. Yes, feel free to check out my channel. It's just my uh, name, John Bartholomew. You can find me on Twitch as well as YouTube. Yeah, here we go. This is the more modern way to play this Queen A5 Scandi. They often put the knight on C6 now in front of the C pawn, which the way I learned to play this opening was to play pawn C6 and knight BD7. But nowadays, a lot of the top Queen A5 Scandi players, there's not that many, but <laughs> um, the top players tend to prefer this approach. Bishop b4, knight c6, quick pressure here, often queenside castling for black. Okay, this is interesting. Now, against that one, I think I should go here, since I don't, I don't really want to damage my pawns like that. So we're going to go knight bd7. Do I know about b4 there? On what move? Like uh, b4 right here? Or later than that? Oh, thanks, BCCI. Yeah, shout out to Jerry, Chess Network. He's great, too. Also, um, frequently seen on Lee Chess. In fact, I think he might only stream on Lee Chess. I don't even know that he streams on chess.com. What is the difference between your Twitch channel and this one? Good question. So uh, this is the official Lee Chess channel. I am just a guest here. I'm very happy to uh, be doing Lee Chess plays, but ultimately, this is Lee Chess's channel. It is their Twitch presence. And uh, my channel is just one where I stream. Um, my YouTube channel, I'd say, is uh, more the educational kind of arm of what I do online. I have tons and tons of videos on my YouTube channel, by the way. I've been posting online since uh, 2015 or 2016. Actually, I think 2015. I have something like 1,500 videos on my YouTube channel. And... The vast majority of those, I, I would say, are like educational type videos. Often me playing, explaining my thoughts, very much like what you see today, but um, even more focused since I'm not usually looking at a chat. Let's castle. We'll try to attack down this file. Sali Bovich is playing a good game here, but let's see if I can give Sali some problems. B4 after queen a5 is the Leonard Gambit. Eric Rosen has an old video about that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, also known as the Mises Gambit. Yeah. It's an interesting one. I don't mind playing against it usually, but uh, it's definitely interesting. Okay, I would have played c3 there if I were white, because now if I want to, I can win a pawn, and I'm probably going to avail myself of that. Might even win two pawns in the end, but we shall see. Do you try to always pick a new challenge, or is it just random? It is random, actually. So um, I have an option to select a random challenge that Lee Chess set me up with. And yeah, I can just click that and get uh, an instant game against one of you guys. So there's no priority given. Anyone can challenge, just as long as it's 3-0. Hello, Drazinho. Greetings, thanks for joining the stream. No, I have not lost or drawn any games this stream. Yeah, it's been a pretty clean one. All right, I got to be careful here because Salibovich is lining up against B7. You know, I was thinking about C6 here, but there's a move that makes me a little bit nervous 
about that. Um, so I'm rethinking what I should play. Queen d5 was my backup move. I think I'm going to play queen d5. But think about this, guys. If I play c6, do you know what move would make me nervous if I were to play that? We'll look at it after the game. But I think queen d5 is the safest here. Yes, a lot of you guys knew where I was going with that. Bishop a6. Mm -hmm. Bishop a6 was a concerning move. Let's take here now. I'm not too worried about this. Okay, and now I feel like I have a pretty solid position around my king. I'm just going to button things up a little bit. Defend a7. I'm up two pawns in this position. I can make it a third one if I want. Is that too greedy? I like it. Let's go for it. I do admit, I, I sometimes grab too many pawns, though. I do like to pawn hunt. Mm. Let's just reinforce. I'm going to take with a rook, actually. That seems like safest. Then I don't open either of these files. Okay, but now I take. Oh, I guess I was probably doing that no matter what. I was thinking that black was not, or that white was not going to lose further material here, but in fact, it looks like queen e1 is the only move in this position. And then I can trade down and that'll be an easily winning endgame. Yeah, thanks for the game, Sally. Seems to me you got to play c3 right here. Let's see if there's any other moves. Ooh, bishop takes a7. I didn't even look at that. That just seemed too bold to me to warrant uh, my brain actively thinking about it. But I guess the point there, because remember, if, you, if ever you grab a pawn like that, Fisher style against Spassky in their um, first actual played game in the World, World Championship in 1972, you got to reckon with this possibility. However, here, that runs smack dab into bishop a6. <laughs> so that's why bishop takes a7 is seemingly justified. But yeah, I didn't even look at that. I was thinking c3, which I think is also pretty reasonable. And unfortunately, after bishop c3, it gets rough for you in a hurry because you lose a couple pawns and you're kind of trying to muster things up here against my king unsuccessfully. This is interesting, though. You always got to be vigilant. You know, number one rule in chess, in my mind, is just like they say in boxing, protect yourself at all times, right? Protect yourself at all times. This is a game where one move can undo... Dozens of good moves that you had previously played can happen in an instant. So if I play c6 here to defend against this threat, seems like a responsible move, right? Many of you in the chat spot it because, you know, I mentioned this moment and asked you guys about it. Bishop a6, that was concerning. Attacking the b7 pawn again. And if takes, well, watch out. Watch out below. Queen takes a6, check. Queen c7, take here. And I'm, I'm going to lose now. I'm losing my queen. So queen d5, it looks like, is the best move, but that's, that's maybe not the most natural move. So, you know, I had to be cautious here. Always be cautious, doubly so when you're in a position that you know is winning. You should have um, hypervigilance all the time, but I double down on it when I know I'm winning because I know the opponent's desperate. Shorten your queen. We played before many a time. Oh, you've beaten me once before. I'm tempted to re remind myself of that game. Okay, so we got a tough opponent here. Should I play another Joe Bava London? I'm feeling it. IBM says, I'm just a guest here. Last dozen videos are all John. <laughs> yeah, that is true. Schrodinger's Queen, are you there? Yeah, Lee Chess has been posting a lot of my, my clips recently. But uh, Sabina also does Lee Chess plays. You can find her streams on here too. Looks like we're going to have to move on. It's too bad. Schrodinger's Queen is always tough. Good luck, Juju Beast. Are you there? Is Scandi disrespectful or just very, very naughty? Asks Milenko. <laughs> That's funny how you phrase that. Some people are very principled in chess and they consider it an affront if the opponent plays some maligned opening. 
or objectively unsound opening. Uh, which I always thought is a funny attitude. That's like if you're a poker player and you're like upset that there are bad players at your table playing every single hand. Chess would be really boring if you had to play correct chess all the time, right? I consider myself like a fairly strategically sound player. Like I generally avoid complications if I don't have to enter them. A lot of my wins that I've had in my career that I'm happy with have been like technical wins. But, you know, if everyone played E4, E5, stuck to accepted theory, was okay with a draw at all times, never played anything hyper-modern, the game would be, a, would be far less rich. So I think we should welcome the, uh, the sketchy openings with open arms. <laughs> JC says, I get offended if a player rated much higher than me plays an unsound opening. Feels like they're trying to flex how much better they are. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I kind of get that point of view. But uh, then again, gives you a chance to prove yourself. I guess uh, I don't get annoyed by, like, objectively bad openings. It is kind of annoying when certain openings just get played, like, ad nauseum, though. And in the past couple years, it's often been driven by YouTubers making videos on it. So it's just kind of the reality, like... The Eric Rosens, the Levy Rosmans of the world, like drive chess theory online more than any anyone else. <laughs> I, I know some of you guys are kind of sick of that too. Like I've seen a huge uptick in Stafford, uh, Carol Khan too, because uh, I know Levy likes Carol Khan. Enormous amount of players playing Carol Khan in recent years. I, I think that gets annoying just because it's kind of boring to face the same lines all the time. It's not even so much about the opening itself, although I guess it is, but. Like any opening played over and over again against you will probably get irritating. Uptick in the Queen's Gambit since Netflix? No, I haven't seen an uptick in the Queen's Gambit. I have not. The <laughs> GM Little Lemon says, uh, Lelamon actually. So if I could delete one opening from the game, it would be the Stafford. <laughs> I will say the Stafford, as far as a gambit goes, is a pretty robust gambit. Like, um, it's becoming obviously pretty well known at this point, but Black scores well in the Stafford at amateur level. There's no doubt. You can look at the stats on the Lee Chess database. White's got to know what they're doing. If White knows what they're doing, it's not a good opening at all. But um, there are so many traps that White has to avoid. I often think with those sort of things, <clears throat> if you're in any doubt, if you're doubting your knowledge of how to combat some trendy gambit and you know you're facing some trendy gambit, don't even go into it. Like, don't accept it. For example, against the Stafford, e4, e5, knight f3, knight f6. Um, you can play knight c3 on move three. Completely fine. Yeah, it's a little boring, but it's going to take your opponent out of their Stafford uh, path pretty quickly. Or a line I like too, if you play knight takes e5 on move 3 and black plays knight c6, the Stafford move, just play d4. Pawn d4. Don't play knight takes c6. Because in a way, in the Stafford, black wants you to play knight takes c6. Because they want to take with the d-pawn. They want to accelerate their development and open it up. When you don't cooperate, and you actually just play a good move in the center, um, on a practical level, I think that's as good, if not better, than accepting the gambit that they doubtlessly want you to enter. Let's take here, and then I'm going to go check, and I'm going to try to land my rook in on F2. Oh, yeah, you play 3-D4 against the Russian game, also known as the Petrov. Yes, that's also a good one. Good choice. Yeah, that was played in the World Championship. That was that game where uh, Nepo overpressed with the black pieces. I feel like I almost have a winning tactic here, but I'm not quite sure. Mm, 
It's interesting. I want to do it, but I'm just, you know what? Let's do it. This is the spirit of uh, Lee Chess Plays, guys. Now, key choice. Does White play this or that? Okay, against this one, here's what I'm going to do. White is going to be cursing their rook on B1 in this line. You guys see why? Because if they traded queens and took my rook, I had bishop takes e4 with check to win that at the end. And I'm going to get that in anyways. Can you lose a game? <laughs> Asked Kotales. <laughs> you guys got to take me down. You got to work for it. Let's see if that was sound. I think it was sound. It's definitely the move you want to play in this position. You know, just naturally. Okay, here's a little quiz. Rook takes g2. We saw what happened here, right? I think I'm winning after this, because again, if take, 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 I have bishop takes e4. So what am I going to play against king takes g2? What do you guys think? I'm wondering if the move I had in mind is correct. I think it is, but what do you, what's your opinion? Uh, Steven on YouTube says, don't play the moves the opponent wants you to play. Learn that from JB. <laughs> nice. If only we knew at all times what the opponent did not want us to play. That would be a powerful psychological tool. Bishop takes e4. Uh, no, I wasn't thinking about bishop takes e4. Black could just play queen takes e4 in that case, right? Yes, very good, Mr. King. Queen f5. I was thinking if this happens... Not queen e5. Queen e5 I'm not so sure about because bishop takes d4. And I can take here with check, but if I do it this way, I mean, we might be just looking at an opposite color bishop ending. Black's up a pawn, but maybe not winning. And if bishop takes e4, this also looks less clear. But I think queen f5 is the winning move here. Queen f5 threatens this when white doesn't have a convenient counterattack on my queen. Let's see. Ah, uh, they're both winning. But yeah, queen f5. Queen e5, what happens if bishop takes d4? Am I missing something? Bishop takes, king h2. Ah, uh, and just take. Okay. Okay, and this uh, regains the bishop and keeps this. I, I like queen f5 better, though. I think that's more convincing. It's a weird-looking move. Because naturally, I think you want to go queen e5 more so to keep connection with the bishop. But this, this really crushes white. White has too many pieces on the bishop's diagonal where the bishop ostensibly is coming to, to e4. Like no matter what here. Okay. Thank you for the game, Juju Beast. I think in terms of where you went wrong, um, this e4 move I'm a little skeptical of. That handed me the d4 square. The setup I played is kind of funky, but... Uh, it does give black pretty good control of, of d4. I think this plan, like rook b1, a3, b4, is probably the way to go here. I've actually played this from the white side before as well. All right, I promised one game with the anarchy piece, piece set, so we got to we gotta try that, and then we'll do the blindfold game after this. So you guys get a double feature of uh, unusual games. Look at this set. <laughs> I don't know how many people have seen this set yet, but this is one of the options... You can select among your uh, pieces. We've got the cone. So cone to d4. Ojor the Ancient. I don't really know what the story is behind this set. I think it has something to do with Anarchy Chess. You can see the symbol here. Anarchy Chess is um, a, uh, a subreddit where people post like chess memes. It's pretty popular. So I don't know. Did like Anarchy Chess help design this set? Or I'd be curious what the backstory is. Oh, thank you, Peter. Appreciate your uh, comment. It says, I love your educational style. Respect. Yeah, we're all about that here. We're trying to learn. We're trying to have fun, but also learn and get better at the game too. I'd say for me, my content is like maybe 75% instructional, 25% entertainment. Some ratio like that. Are the Rooks batteries? I don't know. That looks like a tissue box to me with the, with the Fide logo. 
the bishops are actual pairs. Like you can have the bishop pair. That's clever. Of course, the knight, this is the logo for the subreddit. The knight with the sunglasses. Rooks are bricks. Yeah, what is this? It's a mystery. We need a we need a meme lord on here. Someone who's very familiar with anarchy chess lore. All right, here's a little test for my opponent coming up. Ooh, getting fancy. Bishop takes e7. All right, should I play an in-between move here? Let's do it. Let's go knight takes f2. Uh, because he's got the shades on, we got to send him into action right near the king. Just trolling. But this is a typical way to uh, try to win material because white played a, an in-between move with bishop takes e7. And I played an in-between move right back, basically. Just thinking here if I want to go f5 or uh, e4 right away and try to win b2. I'm going to go f5. Yeah, the king's wearing a diaper. That's correct. I mean, I'm kind of feeling the colors here. Like, the, the color scheme is, is interesting. <laughs> it's, it's growing on me. John, I admire how you get out of cramped positions consistently. Oh, thank you, Drezinho. Scrambling is a useful skill in chess. So I'm open up this attack and also this. My only misgiving about this position is I don't have a knight with shades on right now. <laughs> it's the only problem with my position. <clears throat> I'm a little jealous of my opponent. I've traded both my knights foolishly, but it was for a good cause. I won a pawn. Now, if here, bishop takes e4, I could maybe play bishop f6. That was my idea. I don't actually think it fully works out, though. I think white had a defense to that, maybe. Ah, and if their knight takes e4... All right, let me think about this. Let's just go... I'm going to go here. I'm going to send this bishop to this square, I think. Yeah, let's go there. I'm attacking e3. White needs to defend that pawn. And I might shut the door on the, on the uh, tissue box here, or the brick. We're going to brick the rook. We're going to brick the brick by going rook b6 to trap it, and now bishop c8 is a threat. Common tactic. Maybe white has one way to defend, but it's not, it's not looking great. You like it as well, says Hope Jones? <laughs> A4, A5. Nope, not what I was thinking. Mr. King had it in the chat. Yeah, 96. That's, that's the only move I can think of for white. Key question, do I take that? Yeah, I, I, we got to take it. The knight is too cool. He's far too cool there, sitting on that square. <laughs> I might just wind my king around and eventually win uh, that, that rook. Nah, let's go here. I could also take e3, but I want to leave the bishop on the current square. Okay, Bojor the Ancient, thank you very much for the game. That was the Anarchy piece set in its full glory here. Anarchy Chess, dedicated to the subreddit. So we had to play one game with that. Um, let's turn it back to the Maestro set. So I think uh, Bishop takes E7 is probably not best. Let's do a quick check on this. Got to be careful about those in-between moves. Looks like black is already better here, probably because, yeah, my pawns are coming up soon. But whenever you play a move like that, responding to a capture with an entirely unrelated capture, hoping to create a competing threat, a greater threat, 
you got to watch out for these type of replies. So that does look um, good according to the engine. Because if white goes here, I had to calculate that, you know, I can I can win the material back. Like if bishop here, I can play rookie eight or even sack the exchange. Um, I saw white could try bishop take c7 here, but I have my choice of which pawn to take. Looks like this is good. Yeah, I mean, this looks a little less clear, but the engine to the engine says black's much better, probably because I have threats like this. So do just be careful about those sorts of ideas, Ojo the Ancient. Those in-between moves. Thanks for the game. All right, we're going to fire up our final game. This is going to be a blindfold game, guys. So we're going from uh, the hidden pieces, or sorry, the Anarchy chess set, to no pieces at all, which you can do if you ever want to play blindfold on your own. You go to your preferences, and then all the way down at the bottom, it'll say blindfold chess, and you click yes. And I'm going to have a blank board when I play. This is usually how we wrap up the streams. If you want to follow the game with an actual board, oh, this is going to be tough, feel free to follow me on Lee Chess. Yeah, this player's good. I have a 4-0 record, but I got to be careful. Okay, I'm playing a simple pawn structure. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in today. Full focus in our blindfold game. We'll try to make it instructive. Okay, this is an exchange Slav. Normal theory. It's easier to play blindfold when the structure is relatively static. So that's one reason I'm choosing this line. And I played this a bunch of, bunch of times with both colors in the past, so I'm pretty familiar with it. Um, let's go... Hmm. E6 is a little bit passive. Let's go here. Okay. Play bishop d3. I think I've only played one blindfold game thus far in my blindfold career. <laughs> where, uh, at least on the Lee chess plays, where I have not made a mistake in my visualization. <laughs> Usually I make at least one mistake. Okay, I like this position. My opponent has the bishop here, but I have a very strong knight in the center. We're going to prop it up with f4. Castles. Now, should I try to get an attack going? Let's play queen f3. Okay, b5. I think I'm going to go for the attack. We're going to go g4. It's usually best to be the aggressor in, in these blindfold games. I can make my opponent think. I can try to create problems. Okay, knight comes back to h7. I feel like I should rotate my other knight around. Yeah, let's do that. I'm going to go knight e2. I'm expecting like bishop b7 maybe. Ooh, the opponent takes. All right. Um, let's take this way. And I'm going to try to stick the knight on d4 next. I think this is the way. Yeah, queen b6. Let's go here. Bishop b7. Now do I push forward? Or do I play h4 first, maybe? Let's go h4. Got to watch the clock. I think I'm keeping track of where everything is for the moment. So I've got options of like pushing any of these pawns realistically next. And the knight on d4 is doing a good job of blockading. So I like that. Rook c8. Okay. Um, I'm going to take here. 
Let's just get rid of that. He takes with the rook. Okay. Now I think I'm going to go g5. g5 or f5? Mm, let's go f5. More combative, maybe. I think both moves were good, though. Goes back. Okay. Wait a second. Aren't I winning a pawn? Take? Or more? Wait a minute. Takes. Okay. Check. Okay, the... Bishop's hanging on b7, right? But can't I also go here? Oh, wait. Not queen g8. Let's take this. I'm nervous. Rook c7. Um, let's go here. I know I'm winning here, but I'm I'm worried about the time. Let's go. Here. Oh no! Does that there's still a pawn here, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I thought for a second I had moved that pawn from e5, but no. All right, let's go king up. Ah. Ah, I don't know where my pieces are. <laughs> oh, that was raided too. Oh man. That was a raided game. Ah, I lost on time. I lost all my pieces at the end. <laughs> Oh, I had made in two. No, no, I didn't. I didn't because queen e7 was played. Yeah, I maybe got a little too cute in the final um, scramble there. I almost went for mate, though. Queen, queen here, threatening this because if knight f8, there's rook takes f8. But I didn't do it because black has queen g8. And the game continues, even though white should still be winning. Something like that, but uh, <laughs> good game. Nice, and Ben. Let's see if F5 or G5 is stronger here. They both look pretty good. F5 plus seven. Oh, Sag, I lose the plus seven. Oh, Knight takes E6 also, I'm realizing. Hits the queen, hits here. But I don't think there's any way to immediately end the game. So I feel okay about that. <laughs> This is a hilarious ACP, by the way. Average centi pawn loss. <laughs> look, look at this. Zero inaccuracies, zero mistakes, one blunder. 123 average centi pawn loss. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen that. Probably because I absolutely threw at the end in the time scramble, just trying to like avoid a flag. <laughs> I get dinged so hard here with knight f4. Rook f6 was even good because black can't even really take it. Although that would have happened in the game. But that is such a bad move that it, it kills my ACP. Okay, now it's coming down a little bit. 94. Le maybe Leech has felt bad for me. They adjusted it below 100. <laughs> okay, I'm pretty happy about that game though. Overall, I think that was a good game on my part. But uh, couldn't get it done in the scramble. Thank you for the game. Nice and Ben. So, those of you rooting for a loss, you got your wish. I did not go undefeated today. Won with the Anarchy set, but couldn't win the blindfold game. All right. As usual, thanks to everyone for tuning in today, watching, challenging, supporting. Make sure you use all the features on Lee Chess. 
It's uh, totally free to use. It always will be. And um, take advantage of everything the site has to offer. Thanks again to uh, Lee Chess and all the mods. No Joke Chess, Numeroid, um, all you guys out there. We're going to raid U.S. Chess, it looks like. I think the uh, elementary nationals are going on, so there's going to be some broadcasts of those games. They're probably finishing up the tournament here last round, I would imagine. You all have a great week, and I'll see you guys again soon. Take care.